So in a previous video, um, I was showing how the um, how to model like Greek architecture using references. So in this case, I'm using a photogrammetry reference. The there were some issues with um, perhaps showing this uh, first frame. So just to correct, just to uh, alleviate any. Uh, confusion as to what's going on in this. I'm basically showing how to box model um, from references, anything. It can be from images, whatever. But to do this sort of simplified geometry for the purposes of, in this case, of video games, or in my case, uh, virtual re and augmented reality. So what we're working on, uh, what we worked on in the previous video, was modeling this um, theater facade uh, the Odeon near the Acropolis in Greece. And if you watched the previous video all the way through, or if you saw the ending of it, you'll, uh, you'll notice there's a difference in terms of where I'm at. I've gone and uh, cleaned it up some more from what we had before. And uh, for the purposes of simplifying the geometry, but also um, picking up in this video and showing you how to do texture mapping uh, and, and uh, so basically what I've done is I've deleted half of the model so that I could just do half the work. Um, and now I'm going to show you. So we've optimized these red seams are basically that just that they're seams for um, texture mapping. So you can see everywhere that I want to uh, create basically an island for textures. Uh, I've gone and selected out the geometry or the edges and marked it as a seam. So if you look at the UVs for this particular model as it exists right now, uh, look at the faces. You just go. I've gone into the UV editor tab and if you look at the faces, actually we'll select everything and turn on x-ray mode so we can select all the faces and you'll see that they're not really optimized they're kind of all over the place so uh, for the purposes of mapping there's a couple of ways we could do this uh, what I wanted to show you though was an approach where you can um, kind of get these all laid out into a single map and we'll go back into the modeling so I can show you. So I could just go ahead and apply the UVs as it is and have an overlapping set of UVs for the for the um, for the mirror part that I'm about to do. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and mirror it first so that we can see uh, one of the issues that you're going to run into if you try to do half the work and model it this way. So we'll add a modifier. Um, <clears throat> using the little uh, object tab over here with the wrench, add modifier, and we're going to do a mirror. So you get we get the full facade now. Uh, let's just compare it to the facade, the photogrammetry model that we used the last time to make sure that everything lines up. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, it looks good. Pretty much um, close enough. So we could turn that off. Um, now the issue here is I've gone and flipped it, but if you go into edit mode, you'll notice that the flipped version is just flipping the uh, polygons. It's not flipping all of the seams that I've created. The trick to doing that when you're working with um, work that you've done in edit mode is in your modifier, make sure you go over here to the um, on cage option, which usually is not checked, and turn that on. And then that way you get f mirroring across the actual edit mode. And then that way we also get all of our seams mirrored as well. So now uh, this is one of those things you're going to run into when you do these and you're not quite on center. So just to make this quick and show you a kind of workaround that's pretty fast. Uh, let me turn off this. Go ahead and apply. 
Uh, let's see, you can also turn off clipping in case you go too far so it doesn't clip across. Or turn on clipping, I should say. Um, and then there's a merge limit right here. So if we go find a scene, I think it was here. Yeah, you can see there's still two points. So if we zoom in and just crank the merge limit so that they snap. And you just have to pick the smallest number, in this case not much. And just make sure that you're getting everything then. Looks like I am. So that they automatically kind of snap to point. Doesn't change it or anything. Okay, so now we can apply it. Oh yeah, can apply in edit mode, go to object mode, apply. Okay edit we've got everything seams and all all right now if we go to UV editing edit mode select all of the faces notice I did it in x-ray so that we get everything this is the mass of the UVs so now if we do a UV unwrap you'll get this weird kind of unwrapping going on in the part. The reason for this is that there's one thing we've done is when we modeled this and by doing a flip, we basically have changed um, the orientation or the uh, transform on the object. So if we take the object and say object apply all transforms, Make sure, yep, everything's applied. And then do, and let's see what happens with that. So now if we go and we do um, edit, select all the faces, and UV unwrap, you get a better kind of unwrap where it goes on straight. And that's just the nature of like this thing when it unwraps it's based on uh, notice I didn't get everything because I, I didn't have the uh, x-ray turned on when I selected but by doing the fixed transform or the apply all transforms it's basically giving it back a zero zero reference for all everything so when it does the unwrap it's doing it based on the object's local coordinates instead of some offset coordinates which is going to give you a bunch of weird uh, kind of stretched texture so now select everything in x-ray mode, do the UV unwrap again, and you get almost square. I'm not sure why this is doing that. Probably because of this. It's creating like a kind of a warp. So let's see if we can select that. It looks like it's inside. Same thing here. So these are almost everything is right except for a couple of weird distortions like this. Um, so if we just select, let's go and fix this. Notice I pull it wide so I can turn off the. Uh, x-ray mode. So I'll select these faces and then I'm going to hit um, bracket just to get that face to that island and I'm doing it based on scene. So now you can see in terms of what's selected is these and that there's some weird um, angles which basically shouldn't be there on the bottom. Although maybe they actually are and they might actually. Let's look at that and see we look at it straight on viewpoint front and go <laughs> looks like it's along the bottom looks pretty straight Yeah, we'll find out here in a sec by 
going back to the back view. Like this. And just doing a projection from the camera. So we're going to do project from view. Yeah, you see how they're straight now? There is no angle, and that's what we wanted. They're also nice and they're at the right um, orientation. So basically, you can do this. Um, turn off this bracket again. So you can see there's a little angle here too. So we're just going to go to um, Control F1. So we're looking at it from the back. UV project from view. Now it's straight. Um, let's do the same. Let's check. Let's just check them all and see. Yeah, even those. So let's look at these. And we'll go to the either one of them. Side views. As you can see UV project from view. Now they're straight and on top of each other. You can just select one of them and then move it off the other. You may even want to mirror it. Hmm. See if we can mirror the island. Yeah, mirror on the x-axis so that it's uh, across. And then let's do the front. So we're basically going to select all of these front-facing islands. Just one, one of each, one uh, polygon of each. So you can see how I've selected everything that's a front-facing um, kind of major wall. And here they are. These are relatively straight, but they're all oriented uh, at different angles. So if we just go F1, UV, project from view. Now they're all on top of each other and at the right angle. And, <coughs> excuse me. Let's do the same thing for this. Select. Mm hmm, I missed a seam right there. That's one reason why it was warping. Like that. Same thing over here. Pretty good at this point, so let's select it. And UV. So I did pack UV same islands. Integrated.
All right, the way to last, uh, last way to check it is to put a checker texture on our, we're going to shading and this is our um, material one. We can get rid of this one now. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and do a checkered texture on this. So if you go to add, um, do texture, checker texture, put that there. If you hold down, um, I have a nodes helper turned on. And if you hold down control T, that'll insert the mapping for this. In this case, we're gonna use the UV mapping the generated so just pull it from the UV make it point so we can scale the texture this way and apply that to the colored channel so you see now we get this checkered texture but it's very big let's make it black and white all we have to do to scale it is multiply it let's do 20 on the X and Y You'll be able to see if there's any weird um, scale distortion or anything. It looks like it's all good. So this kind of helps to sort of pre-visualize if there's, uh, so we have these that are smaller. And we can fix that. This is why you do these uh, double checks. Um, and you can see these interiors are a little small too. Um, In, you know, like we select, uh, go into let's do UV. So if we select this and hit F to zoom in, you can see that the, the scale of these is just bigger than this other, these others that are pretty much the same size. No, actually, they're not. So let's do, let's see if we can fix it by averaging. Uh, in X-ray mode, select everything again. Select all of our UVs. And under UV, average island scale. And that should pretty much give you, yeah, equal size squares across the entire map. And it is, it's good. Now the issue with that is now we've got a bunch of unused UV space. So we can just take that and then go UV pack islands. So we're going to fill up the UV space as much as possible because we've used, uh, we've scaled everything to be appropriate. It should scale them up equal size. So, yep. So by looking, um, so make sure you have you don't you have um, rotate turned off. You may want to increase the margin a little bit, not too much, not like. <laughs> That, that's as much wasted space. So let's just do like 0 0.002. Kind of depends on the size of your texture. But basically, that's just the gap between things. So that's looking pretty good for the UVs for this. Um, let's go to the modeling. Get to object mode. We will turn off the wireframe now. Basically, if you notice, like you can see the wireframes. Um, all you got to do is go into uh, the, the object itself, and under viewport display, just toggle that. So that's our UV mapped. Um, equalized UV mapped sort of version of this. 
So why all that work? <laughs> um, basically, we want to be able to apply a brick texture to this. And so let's go do that next, just to give an idea of where this is going. So if we do shading again, actually, let's make a new material for this object that we will call blocks and assign uh, we'll get rid of this material so that blocks uh, let's just make sure it's yep okay doesn't matter what the color is because we're going to change it with a map here um, so blocks is applied to everything on this now go into shading and in blocks for the principal B BSDF uh, we're going to add a texture image texture put that there again I've got this uh, if we look under edit preferences and add-ons and you can see the ones that I have turned on the one that actually you want turned on so that you can get this help with the nodes is node wrangler so if you don't have that turned on make sure you have it turned on and basically what that does is when you select this image texture if you hit control T you'll get this inserted UV map uh, which is super useful hook that up to color base color now there's no texture applied so let's open and I'm going to go into, I've got this on my folder structure, I've got a basic global, global texture. Um, so I'm looking for this, this marble here. Let's try the diffuse texture for that and see what it looks like. So it's a marble block texture you can see but it's really big because it's just a couple of blocks so again we can just go like 20 20 and then you get this tiling marble block texture maybe we want to go a little bit more narrow so maybe it's like 40 by 30 Just changing the scales here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's a little repetitive, but it's a start. It at least gives me something to work with. Um, so we can then copy this node structure and just pull it down here, and we'll apply a normal map as well. So um, to do the normal map. there this you'll have to have a normal map and for a normal map you're going to use a non-color color space so that it applies correctly and then we'll add a vector normal nope not that one actually let's just do search and we'll type in normal and see what comes up so there's normal and then there's normal map so you want the normal map and that's the one you put in between here so we go color to this color and then make sure it's set to tangent space and pull that to normal and you'll want to use the UV map that we've applied to the object so in this case it's going to be a little difficult to see if we crank up the normal map you can see that um, it adds a bit of a bump because this is such a smooth, uh, smooth object the light will play um, you get a normalized kind of stony texture out of it alright so heck, let's go for it and just add some other maps too while we're at it I'm just going to leave that at let's do 2 and pull this up out of the way and this one down 
some of these other maps, we can just use this top part since we don't need the in-between. Okay, so we'll copy and paste and we'll make this the roughness. And apply that to roughness. We'll borrow the same vector scale from up here. It's kind of subtle. Mm. Yeah, you can start to see really kind of a subtle roughness map but you start to see the surface detail a little bit and what else was there let's see if there was another to add maybe the specular in this case we can use it as a metal let's see, see there's a specular map and we'll run that into specular there. Again, borrow the so that helps a lot. So you can see where some stones are more reflective than others. In this case it's kind of a common pattern but um, it's okay. We can replace these with other textures later. All right, so let's call that the texturing for this okay, object mode. All right, so. There are some parts, if you look at the original facade compared to this, you can tell there are some missing parts in this that are, uh, it's loading the texture here. Um, some missing parts like this, these two buttresses, and there is an outer, uh, some of these have arches. I'll come back and do some detailing on this. Um, one of the things we may want to do is just apply like um, a mat, you know, we can set a separate modeling. We can put a roof on this. So faces for this and these. Make a new material. Call this roof. And do the same thing. Under, oh, we're going to assign it to just these faces. And then go to shading with our roof selected. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of the stuff off of blocks and just replace the textures. So we'll copy everything and then select our roof, paste, connect everything up. But before we do that, let's replace it with the roof texture. So we want to go back out to, uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure I've got something approximating a C tile or something. A red brick roof. Yeah, let's do that. the diffuse. Connect that up and see what it looks like. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. I'll have to change the uh, tiling on it. But okay, so this will be the spec. specular and this will be the roughness and then the normal map all right so we need yeah okay kept it good And we'll play around with that in a sec. But all of our textures should be. So now we just need to go and change to something like uh, 20. Can you tell if it's oriented correctly? It's not. So we can rotate. Let's see. So I'm just basically rotating the UV for that. Then it's changing the V scale now, so we'll get it 20, and this can go. a little patterny because of the texture itself um, I have some others but I'm gonna leave that for now actually I'll pull those textures in let's do that real quick um, Rooftile ceramics here, so let's do that's better instead of 90, negative 90, we'll do 90 because it's the right orientation. And I don't have. Um, normal maps for this or roughness or anything but I'll just delete these for now just using it as a okay <coughs> so There's that. We probably want, let's go ahead and add one last thing. Um, I'll get into this interior section and how to go about modeling that. And then we'll do the next video in terms of detailing it out. But just for now, I wanna get that started. So let's turn on the theater part, which is this. And you can see, once this is done loading, that it's a pretty complicated, even though it looks simple, it's a fairly complicated model. Let's hide our facade for now. So what I want to do is kind of model a cross-section here and then lay that around. 
uh, and to get it in position and then I'll do some things to fix this. So for modeling that, what it can do, let's see if, what it looks like from the front. So you can see I've not got great detail, but I get a pretty good idea of the scale. And you can also see based on the texturing that there's kind of some lip and stuff. So what I'll do is I want to make a new polygon or a new plane actually. Uh, just add mesh uh, plane. Got added into this. So let's move it. Just move it up into our collection for now so that it shows up and it's visible. Um, I'm going to hit E to rotate it. To get added, there it is. It just doesn't really matter um, the scale. There it is. E to rotate. I'm gonna do 90. <coughs> I'm basically just creating this as a placeholder. You'll see what I mean in a sec. But I want to put it up here. Okay, and get it sort of flush with that edge. Okay, now go back to my, sorry, I'm in edit mode, go to F1, and I want to delete this face and then just start adding points um, by doing this poly build. Um, or, Alternatively, I can leave this face separate. Move that up over here and then just do a poly build using this. So basically, trying to figure out if I want to conclude this. I'm going to go ahead and include this edge. So point, nope, I want to build off that. Deselect. Yeah, it's going to try to build off anything, so I need to delete that face. Go ahead and delete face. Now I want to do a poly build. It's just going to add a point. And it's just adding points. So what I can do is... I'll insert edges. I'm going to go straight with this for now. Um, this will be my first seat down to this floor over to this and down over down over down over so basically I'm just following this sort of rough edged guide here of the seats. If I didn't have this photogrammetry to work from, I could um, try to do it from a diagram or just references, count the f seats and try to just guess. Um, interesting there's just a tiny little lip here I hadn't noticed before it's one of the reasons you want to do this and this is like a high section and then it goes and starts up again except this is a walkway so we go up and then there's some seat backs and then the seats and this is stuff it'd be really tricky to try to uh, find and get right just by eyeballing a schematic or something like that. You can see there's some weirdness going on here, the way this thing comes down. This is where photogrammetry kind of lets you down, um, but I'm just going to keep going based on the side and see what happens. And starting to get a little bit hairy 
Um, wow, can't tell. Because I can see I've got this over here. It's almost like I'm missing a seat. Assuming that's it. Yeah, because that's the stage. Um, yeah, actually, there's another, and then a whole another row down below. So let's go back to view front. So if we go down one more. And over and down. We can add the others here in a sec and then come back to basically here. All right, so why did I do all that? Select all this. Where has an issue with generating from all of these points? So you just have to kind of give it enough to go on. And then maybe there we go. goes to this row. There's a little bit of a step down below after that, like a little extra space. And so we can add another point. Or actually just extrude this down. So what it is, I extruded it off on the Z so I can set that to zero and then on the Y. Oops, wrong way. Um not Z, but on the X, because it's rotated, I forgot. Like that. And then just extrude this. Again, not on the Z, but on the Y. Oop. X. So that'll be that little lip. And then from there, can extrude another one down and then over and do the chairs. So this will be the base. And I'll pull this over. I'll just cut that to 
where the chairs come to. And I'll do a slice here. And there should be another edge here for the back. This is like the king seats. Or at least the wealthy. straightened out. I'm going to take the whole face and pull it just forward so I can see it. Go to F1 and then I'm going to go and straighten out all these edges. Um, so just to do that I'm just going to scale flat. Looks okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and take these points and weld them all together. Merge vertices at center. This one too. And this one can go to here and be merge vertices at last. Just a oh, we don't need to do that. It'll triangulate. <laughs> All right. I think looks sort of consistent. There's a little weirdness here where we had trouble. Let's try to le level that out. Means this one could come forward a little bit. It's looking better. All right. About as good as I could see it getting. Now we've got that. Let's get it um, in position. Oops. Pull the whole thing to the edge right there. And what you want to do is go into edit mode and we have our center uh, rotational or our um, object reference point here, the world center. Um, but we want to orient around this, so I'm going to go ahead and make under an object mode. I'm going to go ahead and add a cube.
Where did it go? Oh, I added it in probably here. Yep. So it's hidden. And I'm just gonna move it to where I want this thing's center point to kind of rotate around. That's right, let's look at it from F2, wireframe, you can see, turn off the theater for a second. I think it'll work, it's close enough, we can adjust it. <coughs> because what we're going to do is take this, go into edit mode, and apply the spin. Basically just rotate around. Oops, sorry, did I did apply it to the wrong. Yeah, I applied it to the cube. Don't want to do that. Z undo object. This plane. There, edit, spin. I think I have to select my faces that I want to apply it to. All of those. Yeah, spin, there we go. And Gonna make it go 180 degrees minus 180. Which seems to go too far. Interestingly enough, can increase the number of sections. Probably 48. Uh, you can see. <coughs> that the rotation of 180 is too much. So, probably, hmm, oh, part of the uh, issue is you can see it's doing it around the world. Um, center. So if I just move that position to, let's go to the top view, I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> this is the center position of the rotation. So you can do cool spirals and stuff, but basically I want to get this thing lined up. Let me hide theater part. I just want to get it lined up straight off of the edge. Get it so that it's all lined up. Square. This will get and then I can go back to 180. There. So it's going to be coming to here. <clears throat> you can kind of tell that <coughs> it's bigger than the arc. Um, so there's like, it extends uh, beyond 
In other words, there's a, it's hard to describe. There's a um, sort of extension off of it. The real center of this thing isn't where I had it, but it is going to be completely round, so we just, we have it right. We just need to pull it and then extrude these faces off. So, I think, just want to make sure I get it wide enough. Yeah, that it comes to like there. And from there, we can select everything, pull it back like that. And then just extrude, um, probably extrude the whole thing, and then we'll just and cut it here for these uh, walkways. So let's hide the theater, select these faces. Just, uh, notice I turned off x-ray and I just went to the corners. Um, so now if we do an extrude, look at that. Oops, I think I missed top part there. Oops. Yeah, just make sure you have only the parts you want selected. <laughs> Alright. And that's that. So there's a rough stage based on the model that we had. Let's pull our yeah, the facade. Get it positioned. Yeah. Okay. So um, you know we can select these faces and get it positioned correctly. That's the uh, general shape. Now we have to go in and like do all of the stairs and the paths and stuff like that. But that's the best way I've found so far of getting like a complex kind of spiral like this with multiple edges going. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll call it stops for that. We can. Um, in the next video, we'll go through, finish this out, put in the stage build up the stage, maybe the roof, finish it all out, hopefully. I've covered enough. This has been a really long video, and I'll probably skip through a bunch of parts, but if you have any questions, just post them in the comments.